The danger with open systems is that liquid nicotine is extremely toxic, and as these systems have become more popular, accidental exposures to nicotine has increased dramatically nationwide. And you can see from these charts the number of liquid nicotine exposures reported to poison control centers increased from just 271 in 2011 to more than 3,700 last year. This is a staggering rate of increase. And so far this year, we continue to see hundreds of accidental deaths and exposures and injury every month. Uh, ingestion or skin exposure to even small amounts of liquid nicotine can lead to elevated blood pressure, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, seizures, coma, and it can also be fatal, particularly with young children. Tragically, last December, an 18-month-old child in Montgomery County, New York, died after accidentally ingesting liquid nicotine. Uh, companies are on notice that they must comply with New York State's child-resistant packaging requirement in order to prevent such tragedies. In February, my office began an an investigation to determine whether or not manufacturers were actually complying with the child proof requirement. We found that in many, many cases they were not. Deadly liquid nicotine was readily available without child protection, both online and from bricks and mortar retailers known as Vaporiums. Uh, today, I'm proud to announce that my office has reached settlements with four companies that were clearly in violation of this law Henley Vaporium in Manhattan. Beyond Vape, a California-based seller with three stores in New York City, Rocket Sheep, which is an e-liquid manufacturer, and e-cig distributors, which is an online retailer. Our, our settlements require the companies to stop selling any of their products without proper packaging in New York State, to take measures to recover any unsafe products that they have already sold by offering refunds or exchanges, and to provide proof of testing to ensure that their new packaging is compliant with state law. The retail stores in this group are also improving employee training, and uh, the retailers will be paying penalties totaling almost $100,000. So it's very easy to see the difference uh, here. Here's a bottle I think I have here that is not child resistant. Now, this is called Rocket Sheep. It has a cute cartoon picture of a sheep. It is easy to open, and, and it smells like something that no adult would ever be attracted to, but it is a floral, pervasive scent that sometimes children find attractive. This is not a product that is uh, designed to be unattractive to children. So that's what you're not allowed to sell anymore, and we're proud to say that we've, we've reached a settlement on that. And I think I've got... Uh, the other one, yeah. This is a product that does have the proper packaging, and it doesn't come off easily. You have to push it down and do what you do with normal child-resistant caps. It's harder for a kid to get into. So this is the law in New York State, and this is something that we intend to see is uh, followed meticulously by anyone who wants to sell liquid nicotine in our state. We're sending a message to this rapidly growing industry. Whether you're a manufacturer, an online re re retailer, you are a vape shop, if you violate state law, we will come after you. We won't tolerate companies putting children in danger simply to earn a profits by evading state law. And uh, I'm pleased that we've been able to do this with our colleagues uh, and allies in this effort. We are committed to protecting young people from the dangers of tobacco in all forms. We have in New York made extraordinary progress in the last few decades in using our public health and tax laws to discourage consumption of cigarettes, to cons discourage consumption of tobacco products. Um, E-cigarettes are the next frontier, and it's going to require more years of work to ensure that these products do not undercut all the good work we've done in reducing consumption of tobacco through other means. Last August, uh, my office submitted comments to the Food and Drug Administration in Washington together with 28 other attorneys general calling on the agency to strengthen the regulations on e-cigarettes and to prevent marketing to children. 
We also called on the FDA to ban flavored e-cigarettes that may appeal to children, just as the agency has banned combustible flavored cigarettes decades ago. The need for action is clear. The Center for Disease Control has reported that e-cigarette use has tripled among middle and high school students from 2013 to 2014. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I would call your attention to these statistics. This is an extraordinary spike. This is an extraordinary spike in the consumption of e-cigarettes. This is a whole new public health menace as yet is largely unregulated and it is something that my office and I know a lot of our allies in public health across America are willing to engage on. But this is going to be a fight that will be with us for a number of years. I thank you for coming today uh, and I would uh, like to say that my team did a terrific job but that we have a great, also we have a great coalition of allied organizations that work with us on this issue. We are ready for this fight. I'm sorry that in some respects it feels like we're starting over again where we were some decades ago dealing with cigarettes, but we're ready for it and we're going to work as hard as we can to ensure that the progress we've made on other tobacco products uh, is reflected in the work we do on e-cigarettes. And so with that, I'd like to bring up a, a tremendous ally in the struggle, Chuck Bell from Consumers Union. So <clears throat> Consumers Union is the um, Policy and Action Division of Consumer Reports, uh, based in Yonkers, New York. We're a nonprofit organization. Uh, so we're deeply concerned about the growing number of calls to poison control centers about liquid nicotine products. And these include uh, last year more than 1,600 involving children under five years old, um, as well as about 1,600 adults. Uh, liquid, liquid nicotine, as we've heard, is a highly concentrated neurotoxin, and even one teaspoon could be enough to kill a young child. If you have liquid, liquid nicotine in your home, you should make sure that it's locked up and that it's in a child-resistant container and out of reach of children. Uh, and if you've purchased e-cigarette liquids that are not in child-resistant containers, I encourage you to call Attorney General Snyderman's office so we can take further action to enforce New York's new state law. Uh, New York is very much a leader in passing this law. Uh, we are quite concerned that um, if you consider in young, um, in homes where there are youth using these products as the youth is, uh, use has tripled, there are often younger brothers and sisters in those homes, including toddlers, uh, that may go into their brothers and sisters' room and find these products unsecured. Uh, so this is very much an imminent uh, unexpected product danger. Uh, this industry juggernaut is sort of on a collision course with public health. And so it's really imperative that Congress act to strengthen our chi uh, child resistant packaging for and require these for all products sold in the United States. As long as they're manufactured in many locations across the United States in literally thousands of different products, uh, it's certainly possible that more of them will leak into the New York state economy and continue to pose a risk uh, to our kids. Um, and I just also want to call attention to the fact that these come in colored, uh, colored containers, uh, flavors like cherry, chocolate, and bubble gum that are attractive to young kids. So this is very much uh, something that parents uh, have and caregivers have to be concerned about. Uh, so we commend uh, Attorney General Snyderman and his staff for working so hard to enforce our state law on this issue. Uh, New York is very much a public interest leader, and uh, we commend you for that. We urge other states to follow your great example on this. Thank you, Chuck. And now we're going to hear from Mike Devoli of uh, the American Cancer Society. Uh, good morning. My name is Michael Devoli. I am the Director of Government Relations for the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. We are the advocacy affiliate of the American Cancer Society. Um, the American Cancer Society has a unique perspective on this. Uh, we look at everything through the cancer lens. One third of all cancers in New York City, in New York State, and nationally are tobacco and smoking related. Smoking is the number one cause of preventable death in New York City, in New York State, and nationally. We've made enormous progress in the past 50 years in terms of driving down the smoking rates as a result of the work of people like uh, the Attorney General, the State Legislature, Congress, collectively working very hard to drive down those smoking rates. E-cigarettes and their exploding growth are posing a new challenge that I'd love to say we've never seen before, but it is something we have seen before. We've seen this exact story once before 50 years ago when the tobacco industry told us that their products were safe. Well, they lied, they were wrong, and lives were lost. So we can't make the same mistake twice. 
Now, while it is still unclear about the long-term health impacts that e-cigarettes pose, there are two things that are very clear. One, liquid nicotine is deadly, as evidence today and what we're seeing. And two, nicotine in general, we don't want an entire generation full of nicotine-addicted kids. So we need to start taking those very common sense steps that will not only save lives, but help prevent an entire generation filled with nic of, uh, generation full of nicotine addicted children and uh, growing into adults. So we are here today to, you know, to thank the Attorney General for his leadership on this work. This is an incredibly important step. Uh, we, we, we encourage our, the Congress and the FDA to continue to fight uh, and to ensure that these products are safe and then ensure that our children are protected. We encourage and are challenging the state legislature to step up and do its job now and pass legislation in front of the state Senate that would ensure that electronic cigarettes cannot be used in the same places, uh, cannot be used in the places where traditional cigarettes cannot be used because together we are sort of in this fight. So I just want to again thank the Attorney General and this is an important step. Thank you very much, Mike. And as he said, uh, we are together in this fight. We are with public health advocates and other activist public officials across the country. This is an issue that is not going away. In fact, this is an issue we are just beginning to deal with. It's important to understand and the analogy to tobacco 50, 60 years ago is absolutely right on point. Uh, it's not that we have tests showing that this is healthy. They just don't have the conclusive data over time showing what it precisely are the harms it inflicts. I am confident that when that data comes in, we will see other forms of harm and we're going to be dealing with the same situation. In the meantime, the industry is using this gap, this period where there's no regulation, to move in in ways that they would be prohibited from doing with other types of tobacco products. So we are proud today to be taking this step to enforce a good New York State law against uh, non-childproof containers. There is much more work to do, and I'm sure you will see me and my colleagues here and other colleagues around the country dealing with this new problem of nicotine addiction and tobacco consumption uh, as things move forward in the years to come. Thank you. And Matt will take questions. Well, it, it does not make it better in the sense that you're still inhaling uh, nicotine and whatever other contaminants might be in that filter. This is another factor that we still are, are awaiting uh, research on. It is better in the sense that it doesn't mean you're carting around the actual liquid itself, which is much more dangerous when it's put on your skin or it's ingested. So it's helpful in the sense that it gets rid of the liquid. It does not solve the overall problem, though. Well, they were, let me get, make sure I get, get the names right. There were, um, no, well, there was one that was an online retailer, and uh, that one was uh, e-cigarette distributors. Um, they uh, distributed online. The other, there were two stores that had bricks and mortar stores in New York beyond Vape, which had three stores in New York, and Henley Vaporium. And there was one company, Rocket Sheep, which had the attractive uh, cartoon sheep. And this flavor is called Purple Alien, ladies and gentlemen, just in case you think they're really appealing to adults. Purple Alien cartoon sheep. This stuff um, was just being manufactured. They were a manufacturer. We got to them very quickly uh, when they were just beginning to sell their product. And they very quickly agreed to put on the childproof cap. So in three different categories of, of manufacturers, retailers, online and offline. I actually think I said that this was worse than most examples of the government 
in, in Albany. But uh, yes, there's absolutely a room for the governor. Uh, there are three men in a room to negotiate this. The governor has extraordinary leverage oh, at the end of a session of what deals get done. Keep in mind, the governor can veto anything. The Assembly and the Senate can agree to a six-bill package, but if the governor says, I'm vetoing two of them, that package is not done. So yes, all three players have important roles to play, and I look forward to them resolving these matters as soon as possible to give certainty to tenants, to give certainty to the real estate community, to developers, and, uh, and to others who are waiting for this very simple, straightforward set of laws, which must be dealt with, to be resolved. Uh, what more would you like to see the governor do? Hmm? What more would you like to see the governor do? I, I don't, you know, I'm not in the room, so I don't know what he's doing, but I, he certainly does have leverage, and I'm, I, I trust that he's exerting that. Well, uh, the most important thing with all of these laws, and this is whether it's mayoral control, 421A, or rent regulation, is any period without clarity and certainty is bad for everyone. It's bad for business. So that's something that we have to deal with. That, that compels us to act quickly. Punning everything down the road for three months would not be a good situation. The second thing that I've said repeatedly is, and, and I stood in front of a building where there were landlords taking advantage of this particular uh, aspect of the law, there is a structural incentive for landlords to get tenants out by any means necessary. We've never had a real estate boom like this. Prices are going up in very modest neighborhoods at a rate we've never seen before in the modern history of New York, certainly not in my lifetime. So a landlord that might make a living just renting out of a, you know, a modest building now has a tremendous incentive, on, given the way the program is structured, to get the tenants out however they have to do it, because they can triple, quadruple, quintuple the value of the property. They get a vacancy bonus, and they get vacancy decontrol. So I think the system has to be adjusted to remove that sort of an incentive or reduce that sort of an incentive. Okay, thank you.